In the early 80s, a radically new dual-mode radiation therapy device was released on the market. It included an electron mode for shallow treatment close to the skin and an x-ray mode for treating deeper targets. They named the device Therac-25 because it was capable of delivering 25 mega-electron volts. Eleven were installed across North America. What made this system so radical was its lack of hardware safety features and the manufacturer's overconfidence in software. But relying on untested software was this machine's fatal flaw because software can act in strange ways. To prove my point, I want you to look at this code. What you should see is a global variable called sum, which is initially set to zero. Then, in this for loop, we will iterate 10 times. In each iteration, we will print what the value of sum plus 1 would be. We then increment the sum by 1 and sleep for a random amount of time between 0 and 1 seconds. Below the function, we create two threads that run this function concurrently. When we do, this is what we might expect the output to look like. As you can see, both thread A and B print what the value of sum will be after we add 1. At the end, you can see that the final value for the sum is 20, as it should be. Except this is not the output we get. Instead, we get this. What you are looking at is called a race condition. When thread B reads the current value of sum, it does so before thread A has incremented the value by 1. As you can see, thread B thinks the current value of sum is 0, so 0 plus 1 must equal 1. Race conditions occur when concurrent processes are not synchronized, and can result in serious software issues. As you might have guessed by now, the Thurik 25 had several fatal flaws that led to race conditions. While the software and operating system were considered proprietary information, what we do know is that it used a real-time operating system which was built in-house. The advantage of a real-time OS is that it is specifically designed to execute critical tasks within certain time constraints. All software was executed on a PDP-11-23, which had a 22-bit address space and was controlled through a VT-100 terminal. The OS had three critical tasks that received priority from the preemptive scheduler, and seven non-priority tasks that could be executed afterwards. One of these three critical tasks was the treatment task, which had eight subroutines, including data entry, treatment, and treatment termination. During the data entry subroutine, a shared variable called the data entry complete flag is used by the keyboard handler to signal to the treatment task that data entry is complete. The keyboard handler knows data entry is complete when the user's cursor is at the bottom of the screen. The data entry subroutine upon being called checks to see if the mode and required energy have been entered by the operator. If so, it looks up the required operating parameters for the mode and energy prescribed. It will then call another subroutine to set magnets inside of the machine. This will take about 8 seconds to complete, during which time no changes to the settings will be detected. Once the magnets are set, the computer immediately checks to see if the data entry complete flag is set. It is entirely possible for an operator to accidentally set the wrong mode, place their cursor at the bottom of the screen, only to realize the mistake. They would then have to hit the up arrow to get back to the energy mode and change it to the correct setting. If they did this within the 8 seconds it takes to set the magnets, then the changes, while appearing on the terminal, would not have actually occurred, and the wrong treatment would have been administered to the patient. When the company who manufactured the Thurac 25 learned of this issue, they sent the following letter to their users. Effective immediately, and until further notice, the key used for moving the cursor back through the prescription sequence must not be used for editing or any other purpose. To avoid accidental use of this key, the keycap must be removed and the switch contacts fixed in the open position with electrical tape or other insulating material. For assistance with the latter, you should contact your local AECL service representative. Disabling this key means that if any prescription data entered is incorrect, then a reset command must be used and the whole prescription re-entered. The Therac 25 severely overdosed six patients, and eventually numerous changes were made to ensure that it would never happen again.